The Multimedia Ninja Podcast, Episode 62. Hey, this is Multimedia Ninja Jr., Tom Knight, and you're listening to The Multimedia Ninja Podcast with Bradford Rogers. Hello again, and welcome to The Multimedia Ninja Podcast, where it's all about surviving and thriving in the digital convergence. My name is Bradford Rogers, and I'll be interviewing some multimedia ninjas who are making things happen in their respective fields and sharing tips, tools, and insights for multimedia artists and content creators. As always, you can find show notes at themultimedianinja.com. This week, multimedia drumming and voiceover badass Tom Knight. As you may know, in this podcast series, my friends and I will be talking about all things multimedia, including creativity, shaping your ideas, and how to be more productive doing it, regardless of what kind of content you're creating. We have got an exciting episode for you today, so what do you say we just let's get to it? To it. To it. To it. Hey there, welcome back to another uh, episode of the Multimedia Ninja Podcast. I'm wearing my shades today because our guest is totally outcooled me and I'm just trying to keep up. Uh, we got so much to talk about here that uh, a 30-minute thing wouldn't even cover it, so I'm just going to say, please welcome voiceover artist, drummer, multimedia ninja extraordinaire, Mr. Tom Knight. Hello, happy to be here. Man, this is a... <laughs> I love this room. I love this room. Can I just move in? I want to live here. If uh, Daisy will let you, we're all good with that. Because, I mean, I love my studio, but this is happening. Well, you get, you're getting a great sound out of yours, I must say. Oh, thank That's, you, thank you. I love what you got going on here, though, man. Can I take this mic home with me when we're done? Uh, it's no Neumann. I think you may want to... But sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I gotta, Options are good. Yeah, I got to pick your brain about that later. But uh, okay. if you haven't been following Tom on at Tom Knight Voice on Instagram, etc., that's right, and various other places it will get to, mm -hmm. he is kicking <laughs> on all the voiceover stuff, <laughs> which is not how I originally met him at all because no. he has so many different skills. Actually, I met you, I think, if not prior, I met you at the 2003 Atlanta Heroes Awards. Wow. Uh, yeah, down at Peachtree Plaza, and you were drumming, <sighs> and I was playing keyboards. Yeah. And this unknown gentleman to me named CeeLo was one of the people we were supporting, which uh, who knew? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And we, and we would end up doing that several more times. Mm -hmm. uh, who, who did we get... Peter, lucky enough to play with oh let's see uh so, peter vogel among peter, other things peter vogel, yes 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 <laughs> and i i may have a photo to dig up for the video version we'll see about that but and let's see so we backed up michael bolton mm -hmm. michael mcdonald the michaels yes the michaels bolton and mcdonald ah, and uh let's see we didn't get to back up bon jovi but we did get photo opportunities mm -hmm. with him joy um, I believe. Joy. Uh, Kelly Price, maybe? Did we do? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Bo Diddley. Bo Diddley. Uh -huh. That's right. I forgot about Bo Diddley. Mm -hmm. How could I forget about Bo Diddley? And Very with that signature guitar, mm -hmm. you know. The square guitar. Oh, and man. I remember, I, I believe I told him, like, just side stage, you know, they didn't want us to really talk to anybody. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. the official line, but I was like, man, I'd recognize that guitar anywhere. And he said, yeah, my regular one's in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Right, buddy. I hate it when oh, that happens. Oh, man. Yeah, that was very cool. But I noticed right then, and I, I don't want to piss off all the other drummers that are uh, e oh. either have been guests. We seem to be have a plethora of drummers that are multimedia ninjas. I don't know What's if that? drumming is not paying enough these days or what. But <laughs> Going out it, of style. Yes. But without <laughs> taking anybody off, I just have to say your timing oh. and groove as the combination of both really stood out to me from the get-go and you had a quote on your site from another guy um a a well-known drummer that something to the effect that when tom is playing with a click it sounds like the click is playing with tom oh and that, that was one of the nicest quotes ever um mike mcknight uh, mm. was was kind enough to say that and I didn't even have to ask him. <laughs> oh, nice. I had to ask Weckl and, and mm. Dallas Austin, for, hey, would you mind saying something nice about me? But he, he actually said that to me, and I said, 
can I take that? And he says, absolutely. Um, and for anybody who doesn't know, he, he is um, a profound mus- musician, but also the programmer for the current Roger, Roger Waters tour. Hmm. Um, he was TLC's programmer when we were on okay. the road at the same time as programming for Mariah Carey. So that guy was, we would be on the bus going to the next city and he'd be on an airplane going to, I don't know, Paris or something. Mm-hmm. So it worked out. For him, it was like a zipper of, of gigs. <laughs> right. And he never slept. Mm. But um, but yeah, an amazing programmer and sound designer and musician. So it was really nice for him to say that. This is probably a good chance to, to drop back and punt a second, so to speak, because so you played for a... a at least one band that folks may have heard of. Mm-hmm. At the, that was uh, probably immediately prior to when I met you, and if not simultaneous. But mm-hmm. and then even at that time, I believe you were doing stuff with 3ds Max. Yes, and you have continued to do. I've seen you around the uh, recording academy, mm-hmm. holding a steady cam at different times, <laughs> and and you've been teaching. I believe not only drums mm-hmm. but mul- various multimedia mm-hmm. things at uh, is it AIM. I was there for 21 years from 1994 oh, <laughs> to, yeah, yeah. Since you were four. When your job, oh, yeah, right, thank you. When your job is old enough to buy alcohol legally, it's time to maybe mm. think about doing something else. That, no, from 2000, or sorry, 1994 to 2015. It's an interesting thing. I tried really hard to get drumming work in the 90s and luckily landed into uh, a couple of studios Jack Petrus is a studio owner here in Atlanta, and a couple of summers there in the mid-90s, I was kind of like his go-to drummer, and mm. I met a lot of really nice local musicians, and, and like Doria Roberts. Ah. Um, we did a lot of work together mm-hmm. there, and then long after, Brian Holmes okay. produced a lot of stuff for Pat Walsh mm. at that studio. Anyway, so for a little while, I, I got a lot of work out of that studio, and then... Uh, I decided to, at that place, make my own demo, mm. uh, and I got Mike Hartnett on bass, and, and Jack, uh, and, the, and, and the two of us just basically engineered something for me to pass out to producers. And so, probably around 1996, 97, I started handing out demos, and Dal- well, it must have been before 96, because in 1996, I got a call from Dallas Austin's uh, studio to go to Nashville tomorrow. Mm. Can you be in Nashville tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely, I can, and was. And so we recorded Deborah Killing's album, nine songs that are amazing. And, um, and that was kind of the beginning. I, I became Dallas's go-to drummer for a little while. Uh, I worked on Monica's record at Doppler, and then TLC's record, and then that sort of grew into the gig. Mm. Uh, and so we started started off doing... TV shows like Jay Leno and Rosie O'Donnell in support of fan mail, and then the fan mail tour kicked off in Japan. Mm. So, what about the video stuff? After that was over, I was, like every other touring musician, out of work. Mm -hmm. Great. I've got some money, but this is not it, and this will not sustain me for the rest of my life. I need to get back out there. So, I found that a lot of the people in the day were, were building EPKs, which is just a, a, a fancy version of, uh, for, to say, video promo. Mm-hmm. So I went to Image Mill. Image Mill, by the way, is run by a cool cat named Mill Cannon. Mm. And he, had, he was responsible for all of the tour graphic elements on the big screen behind us every night when we played. He also would send crews out to various cities and interview us, all of us, including the musicians, right? So I went to him and I said, hey... I, I want one of these EPKs. And he quoted a, a, a very fair price, but it was way more than I mm. mm-hmm. wanted to spend, right? And that would be electronic press kit. Kids. Electronic oh. press kit. Thank you. Uh, so I decided to go to a bookstore, remember those? Mm. Uh, and I bought digital video editing for dummies. And uh. that summer, huh. I learned to how to edit video and do a certain amount of after effecting. Mm. And I had taken a little digital Hi8 camera on the road, so I had some stuff to, to cut. Back when you had to capture it. 
Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. With the Firewire Capture uh-huh. Card. Right, right. eBay was my friend that mm-hmm. year. And so I hired Kevin Harry, a really great actor and singer here in Atlanta, to be my narrator. He mm. he told the story. And I tried to cut the, the, the EPK in the style of VH1's Behind the Music. Mm. And so we intercut his narrations uh, that were happening over top video footage and still an- animated stills with a, a mock interview that, that we conducted. And anyway, long story short, I finish that thing and I take it back to Mill at Image Mill. I say, hey, would you give this a look before I start sending it out and tell me if it's crap? And he says, you produce this? <laughs> okay, here's the keys. Why, yes. <laughs> here's an alarm code. And uh-huh. your first job is to cut an EPK like that for Charlie Wilson. Mm. And that was my first gig. So I'm like, uh-huh. okay, this is not how I wanted this to turn out, but I'm not going to say no. Uh-huh. And that was the beginning of my in, you know, foray into, into video production. And it came a time after about a year there where uh, he just said, look, I've got this old DV video deck, a DV cam deck here. Hmm. Just take it. We're kind of slowing down and I'm moving in a different direction. Uh, go ahead and take this. Hmm. And you've already got some nice Canon cameras, start a video company. And I did. So 2001, a year Mm -hmm. later, I incorporated that, that company is still around. And, uh, but most, mostly what I do with it is, is take money Mm -hmm. for VO and video productions a little bit, mostly voiceover though. Mm -hmm. Um, but in, in, in the first few years of the business, I, we were rocking. I say we, me and a buddy of mine named Alan Barnes, Hmm. great bassist, uh, and now is a comic. He draws comics, and it's exceptional work. And he's drawing all kinds of comics now, and oh, it's amazing. Um, We were getting all kinds of work, and and uh, and so in the in the mid two thousands, when you know cell phone technology started to explode and prices started coming down. budgets were dwindling. Mm. And one of the first things that the clients would drop, they would X off of the the invoices or or proposals was voiceover. They're like, Mm. you do it. So I started to read my own voices and they sucked. They were horrible. I would (laughs) never want to imagine, sir. Oh no. Oh, it's, if you heard it, Mm. I, but it would forever change your possibly your opinion of me uh, and i i, I we got to get very, a hold of I these would be very afraid of that <laughs> it's awful uh, but you know we didn't want to lose the business so mm-hmm. we you know we, we, we i did that and um then i started enjoying it you know and i thought okay all right let's see if there's a, a future here and there was so you know uh, sorry for the really long story Clip, but yeah. that's kind of a a 10-year map of how all that happened clearly uh that has become successful because that actually brings us to a segment i like to call winners Winners and and losers and we've got it's very simple this week our winner is mr tom knight winner there we go (laughs) who um one among other things he is the recipient of an emmy award for voiceover work what's what's the scoop with that okay so uh, Image Mill partnered with a guy right next door named Ty Taurus, who ran and still runs uh, a video and animation production company called NLX Design, which, by the way, stands for No Lame Excuses. Ah, Isn't that cool? Nice. So <clears throat> I really looked up to his work and, you know, sort of tried to stay under his wing as far as animation went, you know, you mentioned 3D mm-hmm. animating. That was his specialty as far as I was concerned. So I would accompany him to a lot of jobs. And just in the meantime, like in the in the truck on the way to Florida or something, or, or while getting levels in a studio, I just start riffing with different voices. And mm. he thought it was hilarious. And he says, you know what, you might, you might be good for some of these sports promos. Mm. And so he started firing off uh, all kinds of John Facenda style reads. Mm. And, you know, and and the clients liked it. Guys like, you know, Sports Time Ohio and a lot of stuff for the for for SEC South Southeastern Conference were were saying, okay, you know, keep hiring that guy. And what would John Facenda sound like? Oh man, well, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know, put me on the spot, says, Daniel Colt McCoy. <laughs> you know, this multi-sport phenom from rural Tuscola, Texas, is going to lead the Browns to victory. Number twelve. 
Daniel Colt McCoy. Nice. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> and so I would I would get a lot of that, right? And um, okay, so then would be the shootouts with mm. me and a, a really well known uh, voice actor named Sean Caldwell. Mm. He is huge. Like I would love to be as big as him and, and do all the kind of work that he does. Uh, anytime there was ever a shootout between me and Sean, Sean always got the gig. Always. Mm. Well, except for this one. Uh -huh. And so I, I just did the audition, fired it back to Ty. He cut, I think, both versions together. And I never heard a thing about it. I don't even think I ever got paid, but who, who cares, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, a year later, he's at the Emmys, and I don't even know that. I just, you know, I'm just sitting at home watching TV, and I get a text from him, and it says, you won an Emmy. And I'm like, you're drunk. You got the wrong guy. There's no way. <laughs> and he takes a picture of it and sends it to me. And I'm like, oh. I, I take to Facebook, and I'm like, I won an Emmy. Oh, my God. You know, uh, it was like the most liked post I ever made, I think, nice. on Facebook. And uh, But he was going to spend another week up there. It was the longest week of my life waiting for him to get home so that I could race over there anytime, day or night, and grab that thing. Mm -hmm. You spend a lot of time in the music industry doing this and helping other people win Grammys. But, you know, as a side musician, you never got that kind of cr mm -hmm. credit or kudos. You would work in voiceover for just a couple of years, and all of a sudden, this? Mm -hmm. So not only was it a, an exciting surprise, but it was also let me know that I was moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It was affirming, you mm -hmm. know, uh, solidified my resolve to continue, you know, despite any obstacle that I might encounter. And there would be many of those, you know, <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's the story. <laughs> Emmy is not a bad thing. I'd say. No. Winner. Yeah. All right, chopped it off a little. Oh, well. Right. well, that, that definitely calls for a celebratory moment of the Waffle House boys. How about them apples? Man, yeah. how about them apples? Baby Ray Rogers. Yes, sir. Several Rogerses. Anyway, right. so I think, uh, strangely, that brings us to the part that we like to call, What, what the, the heck, heck are, are you, you doing? doing? Mm. <laughs> Insert sound effects. Yes, sir. The, the segment where we ask our guest what tip, trick, uh, hardware, software, philosophy, what have you, is rocking hard for you today, this week, this month, this year, or in general? Okay, so right now, um, I guess I'll start with the obvious, the hardware. Uh, mm -hmm. Very blessed to have a Neumann U87. Yes. Now, it's... Vintage it's a, or new? No, I was going to say, it's new. Mm -hmm. It's not... Yeah, it would it would be really amazing if, if, if you could get your hand... I could get my hands on an older one, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but let me tell you. I don't even know if I'd know the difference. This thing sounds so good. The first yeah, thing I, I did with for it, because <laughs> mm, I was re, I was using an, a Rode NT2 mm, mm -hmm. exclu exclusively before that, and you know, getting an okay sound. I, I I'm not a gearhead, so you would laugh to find out how I voiced the narration for, that won the Emmy, for example. Mm. Uh, it was in a small closet, just filled with clothes. Rode NT2 into a $99 M Audio USB mm. interface mm -hmm. right into a Mac. Uh huh. And I think I was using Soundtrack Pro. Okay. Is okay. That the M Box, one of those, or? Uh... It's, yeah, it's just a, a little box. It has phantom power. It takes two inputs, XLR or, mm -hmm. or a quarter inch, balanced, and then it uh, converts it to some you know, digital signal or something or other. And I, I, I don't even really know how, much about the technology. I just, okay. Let's get the sound in the yeah. computer, and then from there, I'll you know try to clean it up and get rid of all my mouth ticks, noises, mm -hmm. and breaths and stuff. You know, for the client, mm -hmm. fire it off and in whatever format they want, and and, and that's it. Now, though, uh, <clears throat> that U eighty seven is running through a Focusrite liquid channel, which has a 
just a, a matrix of, of possibilities, uh, almost unending, mm. uh, where it can emulate all these different, very well, emulate uh, all these different mic pre's and compressors and, and combinations of those settings you can get lost in. And mm. I did. Gotcha. Um, I think my sound went down before it went back. <laughs> uh, you know, at some point you start saying, okay, wait, I'm, I've gone too deep down the rabbit hole here. Let's just get something that works. Right. And that's all I'm doing now. Uh, that from there... Um, that changes the signal also to a digital, from analog to digital, and then right into the Mac, iMac. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm using Logic X. I don't, I'm, I'm not a Pro Tools guy, um, but Logic seems to be working just yeah. fine. I prefer Ableton, as we're using here. That, uh, oh, sweet. But yeah. I can do Pro Tools because sometimes you gotta. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had a client yet say, it must be Pro Tools. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I can see that definitely happening in the music industry but for exactly. VO it's, yeah. yeah it hasn't been a thing they, they, these guys don't care they just give me a file that doesn't suck you know <laughs> I had a had a buddy convince me which is true that Logic is really cool mm -hmm. and we tracked Timothy P. Green's record in Logic and then when I went to Silent Sound for some mixing and stuff it's like um what <laughs> mm -hmm. they know what it is but they're like no no we're, we're doing Pro Tools here so by the way uh Totally unrelated to that, but I wanted to ask you, you're, you're hitting it hard on the Instagram, I know. Trying which to. Which is uh, at Tom Knight Voice. At Tom Knight Voice. Is the Twitter the same? Twitter's the same. That is awesome. And um, for anybody that's interested, I have the same thing going on, drums, at Tom Knight Drums. I was, that was, yes, yeah. I was wondering yeah. that. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Website is the same situation? Website is just Tom Knight Voice. I, I never had a drumming website. Mm. Isn't that wrong this is okay. wrong i do have a tom knight drums facebook page uh -huh. separate from the my personal page um but i'll be honest with you i sort of kind of waver back and forth as to which network i'm hammering mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's that's terrible i i should be doing them all equally right. uh but it's very time consuming as you yes. probably know yes, it is. and so yeah i tend <laughs> to sort of you know shift back and forth okay mm -hmm. let me let me do let me work on instagram for a while let me let me go take care of twitter it, it's it's not ideal um but i do have all those channels mm -hmm. <laughs> for anyone and who... and on the tom knight voice they are all even though i know you hadn't heard my advice before nor do you need it but you are applying the adage that i cautioned people about way back when which is it's really important real estate, and it is really helpful if your different social medias have the same syntax or, yes. you know, Tom Knight. If it's Tom Knight voice, mm -hmm. but then it's like v VOs by Tom on yeah. Twitter, and right. then the website is yep. tomsvoiceshere.com, right. then yeah. kind of makes things challenging. And yes. can't tell you how many people I know that uh, are don't do that. Yeah, and... For me, I, I had that problem for a, a little while, and I, my excuse, <laughs> if, if I can be, if I can say that, um, is that I, you know, you, you didn't know what other networks were going to show up mm -hmm. and were going to last. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, you didn't didn't well, know what other networks were going to last. You didn't know what other networks, and and then you you weren't uh, cognizant, at least I wasn't at the time, of name choice. Mm. Like you know, there was a period of time when we were being advised with web domains, shorter the better, right? Mm. If you can find a three or four letter domain, that's mm. better. Well, now SEO practices have said differently, right? But if you bought into the old way of thinking, but it grew, well, what do you do? You know, mm. you can buy another domain and tie it to that, you know, but then you, but then you gotta be careful. You don't want, you don't want duplicate content because that's an SEO mm -hmm. thumbs down, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of went through a little bit of that. Um, it's like, oh gosh, I can't believe I named my company Nighttime Studios. What was I thinking? You know, why didn't I just name it after me, my, mm. my name, not mm -hmm. just Night Night, but Tom Knight? Like, what was I thinking? You know, um, eh, you know. And then of course I had to go and spell it weird with a Y, and so people are like, wait, wait, Nighty me? <laughs> <laughs> that was very yeah. popular. Oh my goodness! I uh, wish you know, I could just... do Kramer. <laughs> right? That was very popular. <laughs> I do. I do not do good imitations. Oh man! Well, I, I, hey, dude. Impressions. Me sorry. either. I, I'm trying to think of the only. Maybe, maybe a a a Hank Hill or a. Oh yeah. You know, perhaps. Have at it, man. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. 
I felt like a one-legged cat trying to bury a turd on a frozen pond. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, that's nice. as close as I can get. Yeah, that. <laughs> that's it. That's it. It's a boy it's it. was rubbing string cheese on his guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. But the words, those were the exact words that Hank said. Uh, I, shut up, dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> Beavis or Butthead? Right. Yeah, butthead. I think. Okay. It's, it's so I, uh, Showing my age. I will be posting a link if I uh, if I can grab it to the uh, your Instagram post with the most interesting woman in the world. Oh, Nancy Wilson, <laughs> man, um, she is really uh, that stuff is true about her. Hmm. Um, I have received physical objects in emails from her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, she. I, she she it, it it's was the I was 3D having a lot printing, of fun, yeah. dude. I'm telling, yeah, right, right, exactly. Gosh, that one day we're gonna look back at this and go, yeah, yeah. And what you couldn't do that at one point? What mm-hmm. really? Um, gosh, you just totally blew that wide open with that. That's great, <laughs> Bradford. I'm glad. I'm glad that's down so that somebody will know that we actually thought of that. And I will be speaking with Nancy presumably soon. But I, I have mm. to admit also, if if you haven't noticed, I have a something of a man crush on some concoction of the character the most interesting man in the world Ernest Hemingway Jonathan Goldman, Gold, mm-hmm. Goldsmith uh, the guy that plays the most interesting man in the world mm. because he's also a sailor yeah. and a very cool individual and by the way they just totally f***ed up when they got this new guy doing that I, <laughs> I well, I've seen you. I've seen the, the cutouts, yeah. the pictures with your. Yeah, that's awesome. He is no longer with us. No, <laughs> he got a little waterlogged after the Tortugas trip, but and then I, fell in half, and then it, it was all over. <laughs> bummer, Tortuga. Yeah. Wow, man, I'm 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 having visions of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh yeah, know, not that just, one. That's oh. like part of Haiti now. But the uh, the dry Tortugas. Oh okay. Still a quite a sail off Key West. Yeah. About. Okay. 10 hours or so. But. Very nice. Well, you you will do well with Nancy. She is very tough, but very, very fair, very good at what she does. Um, she knows tell. that yeah. material. I don't want to say like the back of her. It's such a cliche, but it's true. I mean, man, and, and you will be overwhelmed with a lot, a lot to think about, a lot to practice. And then when you're on the phone with her, she's not going to pull any punches. But <laughs> mm-hmm. that's what makes you... You know, grow. I think you know. Well, sometimes uh, neither do clients. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. um, uh, but yeah, working with her is like working out in a gym. I mean, it's it's heavy lifting, man. But it's it. You'll grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's great. Well, all I, all I need to do is hear your work, and I and and if you were already this good before, then I'm screwed. But <laughs> no, 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 no. She. That's what I'm saying. Is it? Mm-hmm. You know, I I didn't book nearly as much before. Mm-hmm. Uh, the lessons with her i mean except for the clients that i already had who like ty towers who were constantly funneling sports scripts mm. to me um and i think i had a radio station imaging gig for like one station i think it was mm. wdsd in delaware or something uh-huh. um but outside of that or or voicing all of atlanta institute of music's mm. stuff back then uh that you sounds know, just familiar friends of mine mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> friends of mine that were hiring me but it wouldn't be until um, studying with Nancy, except for a couple of jobs I got through my agent. I, I should mention Sally Neal at Houghton mm. Talent. Absolutely. Um, I always say the same thing, and then she always follows up by saying the same thing, and that is she should never have signed me because I sucked and my demo was horrible. Uh-huh. And then she always follows up with, I prefer to think I have a good ear. <laughs> and that's very kind of her to say, but... Mm. I sucked, and the demo was horrible. Uh-huh. Um, but she got me um, work with the Georgia Lottery, hmm. um, a very, very high-profile, lucrative gig with a company that I can't name mm-hmm. contractually, but um, they are maybe the world's leader in uh, home entertainment technology. Mm. It starts with a Z. <laughs> <laughs> Um, maybe I'm not allowed yeah I, I, off the record I'll tell you oh, I yeah, can't yeah. say it publicly and I hate that mm-hmm. you know because like it would be like the, the biggest feather in my cap but I can't put it on my demo I can't say I did the job um, but she she got me a lot of work and, and that was prior to Nancy mm-hmm. um, I figured beginner's luck on those mm. really but once I got her instruction and it took me a couple of years to get through all that stuff uh, and then have the demo produced bookings went 
through the roof. Hmm. She she knows what she's talking about, and it worked. Nice. Yeah. I uh, another another applause for Nancy, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to help me. But uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you. Actually, this is uh, related to do that and the prior thing Mm -hmm. uh i'm loving the stuff that you're doing on twitter where you're you're sharing some voiceovers Mm -hmm. i am actually curious i know there's a neumann there Mm -hmm. uh, that you're doing the actual vo on Mm -hmm. and i i'm curious if you're recording with some interface into a a a a smartphone uh iphone type thing or you're recording into a regular camera and then getting it into oh oh, right 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 the videos yes Mm -hmm. yes yes so i will let's pretend this is my phone this Mm -hmm. nice trackpad here i will generally just sort of Mm -hmm. get my make sure my hair is right (laughs) it's very important (laughs) yes you know the vanity uh and you know get everything but yeah i'm rolling in logic so Mm -hmm. i i record natively on the phone but i marry it up with the same vo file i'm recording in logic and i just stitch it together in, in Final Cut Pro and mm-hmm. export it for Instagram or Facebook because mm-hmm. I want to give the same I want to give the same experience right. to my audience that that my clients get mm-hmm. so but there are some there are some times when I don't do that you know people will do a, I, I had a couple of guys request uh, the most interesting voice <laughs> or or somebody said hey do something you know, try Morgan Freeman try all mm-hmm. the which I suck at but there was a couple of voices where I would just grab the phone and just do it mm-hmm. um, and it sounds close i mean it's not anywhere near as as robust of course but you know those microphones and uh they're not neumanns right but but yeah there's not a whole lot of post-production production production. Uh, all i'm ever doing on the back end in case anybody's interested is a gentle typical vo compression four to one compression and then uh I will introduce a very soft gate to get rid of any background noise in between words and phrases. I, I have this weird thing that happens in my voice. A lot of times at the very end of a word or a phrase, something in the back of my throat does something and there's a little mm. tick that comes mm. through. You know, I don't like having to go and manually trunk mm. those out, so the gate takes care of that. Okay. That, that's it. Those two things, that's it. Uh, I don't do any EQ curves um, other than having EQ'd the room to start with. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I did the math and I got had had uh, some of my uh, audiophile friends come over and help me, you know, figure out, okay, where are the standing waves in this room? What are the abundant frequencies that we don't need to amplify? Let's curve those out. But that's the room, not my voice. Mm-hmm. So um, outside of that, it's just, yeah, it's just a gentle compression and a little bit of gating to get rid of, you know, breaths and mouth noises and things like that. And that's it, you know. Uh, and the, of course, the iPhone can't do that. So, yeah. so you'll hear some difference, but... Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's all. That's a similar deal that, like, if I'm doing a promo for the show and I want it on Instagram, then I'll render it out of Premiere or what have you. And then I'll, like, either send it to Google Drive or uh, Creative Cloud as a MP4. Mm-hmm. And then I'll, once that makes its way over to my phone, then I'll have to go in there from Instagram and grab it and post it. You must not be using an Apple phone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you? What am I doing wrong? No, no nothing. I, I've, I have the only way I can get. And this is me. This is my inadequacy here showing. Probably, the only way I know how to get video onto my phone is through Dropbox. Hmm. I upload it to Dropbox, and then there's of course an app that will actually let you download it into your photo gallery. How hmm. are you doing this? Yeah, on- it's pretty much the same. It's just instead of Dropbox, uh, Google Drive or Creative Cloud. Oh. And once I stick it in Google Drive or a Creative Cloud folder from the computer. Uh, presumably, if I remember to have Creative Cloud on and mm-hmm. whatnot, it will make its way to, I can get to the Creative Cloud or Google Drive on my phone, and then I still have to say share, and then you get options, and I have to say save to Yeah, okay. Photo. Yeah, so similar. Well, I, I just, that's the the it's one big. Kind of a pain. It is. That's, the, <laughs> that, that's why I was like, oh, you you must be living the life you're <laughs> you've got another phone you know that will let you have a folder on locally and and drag stuff in and out of it ah you know that's i love apple but that is yeah that's an issue and i i can't actually send it. physical objects to the phone <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that's great you know, the thing i i do not like about apple is it, it like they say it just works it does but it works as long as you do it their way that's right and if there's and, Something else you want to do, forget about it. And if they've decided that FireWire 400, FireWire <laughs> 800, or disk drives are gone, you 
had better be fine with that because mm-hmm. that's what's that's what's up. That yeah. is true. <laughs> <laughs> and we make do. It's fine. Oh, you know. Man. Words to live by, I must say. Mm-hmm. Well, I uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, and uh, actually, I got to go shoot a a little video later and cool. have some clue what I'm doing when I arrive. Mm. But man, I I totally appreciate, as I know, will the multimedia ninja nation you dropping some knowledge on us today oh and, i hope uh, so i hope i haven't talked everyone's ear off i tend to gab no i could i could do about five more spots but uh i i shan't uh, weigh on you for that uh, that that would just be wrong oh man but uh ladies and gentlemen of the virtual studio audience please give it up for mr tom knight Well, that just about wraps it up for today's edition of the Multimedia Ninja Podcast. Be sure and come back next week and bring your friends. Don't forget you can subscribe to the Multimedia Ninja Podcast, YouTube, or email, whatnot, at themultimedianinja.com. And there we go, dot com. (laughs) And uh, delayed reaction there. Damn Wi-Fi keyboard, I tell you what. At any rate... Uh, Make sure you have a great week and come back next time and we will see you soon. 